Hi, this is Joe Johnson, the Green Guy, and welcome to uh, another installment of our show where we discuss everything green. That includes recycling, that includes energy conservation, and renewable energy. Tonight we're privileged to have a, a guest with us from the Green Institute. She, she's the coordinator of the Metro CERT program, and that's Diana McEwen. Glad to have you here, Diana. Thanks, Joe. Nice to be here. Great. Um, Diana, you've, you're originally from White Bear Lake, mm -hmm. and I'd like to uh, give our audience a chance to, if they don't know you already, <laughs> to get to know you better. Sure. And so why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, your sure. personal life, and we'll go from there. Sounds good. Well, um, I grew up in White Bear Lake, actually not far from um, the lake in the old part of downtown um, near Manitou. And um, I uh, went to White Bear Lake High School, I, class of 1986. Great. And um, my family also lives here. My mother lives actually in the house next door to where I grew up. And my brother lives in um, White Bear Township. So um, still have roots out here. And um, while I currently live in Minneapolis, I um, only come to swim in White Bear Lake. Um, although last okay. summer was a little bit rough because it was pretty low. <laughs> That's a terrible thing. But you know, the good thing about it is it started to show people that yeah. uh, we needed to uh, really pay attention to what's going on with our water and our water supply. Absolutely, absolutely. I think yeah. it was a big wake-up call. Yeah, so you said you your mother lives next door to where you grew mm -hmm. up. Did they buy the house next door or yeah. what happened? Yeah, she bu bu bought the house next door and rented it out for a while and then eventually um, um, raised the house and um, built a new one. So right on the corner of 7th and Johnson. Okay. So that's where I grew up. Nice. It's a nice old neighborhood and really like yeah, it. Yeah, I like White Bear. I lived in White Bear for about four years myself mm -hmm. and was assistant coach for the White Bear wrestling team. Oh. Yeah, that's that's great. Yeah, I, I played a lot of sports for White Bear. I really enjoyed growing up in this community um, and still have obviously ties. I come here a lot with my family being here. And sure. so I really I really enjoy the community here. Sure. Yeah, I'm here a lot myself. <laughs> the, the studio we're talking from today is the uh, SCC TV. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's right here in White Bear Lake yep. also. Yeah. Uh, thanks for coming over. I'm glad to be here. OK. Uh, Diana, I've been to uh, several of the different green conferences throughout the last couple of years, mm -hmm. and I've seen you at several of them. And uh, one thing, in a, a few, at least three or four, you've been a speaker at those. Well, I I decided uh, in the early 90s to um, go to the university. Um, I went to the University of Minnesota in the College of Natural Resources where I sure. graduated with a degree <coughs> in um, environmental studies. Um, and then I spent 14 years um, from the mid 90s until 2007 working at Clean Water Action um, where I started right. off as a fundraiser and then ran the energy program and then eventually was the program director. Um, so I, I had 14 years worth of um, environmental experience there and then the uh, stars sort of aligned after I helped pass some policy at um, Clean Water Action, including um, the renewable energy standard in the state of Minnesota and okay. um, you know mercury laws with regards to coal plants, um, that I was able to transition um, to go to the Green Institute in the fall of 07 so I could um, really help communities um, make some of those laws a reality. Um, the energy sure. efficiency, you know, in 2007, uh, we, the state of Minnesota passed some of the most um, sweeping energy legislation that they had in, in decades and it include energy efficiency goals and renewable energy goals. And then I had a chance to go and help communities um, get connected to resources so they could implement local projects that would help attain those goals. Great. And um, mm -hmm. it was a very exciting time and I think um, I was, um, I was green before it was cool. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean, I was too. Um, and, uh, and, and so it's, it's been really rewarding the last few years um, where um, energy efficiency and renewable energy have really um, risen to the top as important issues and things that right. people um, don't think is on the fringe any longer. People understand that these are not just about the earth and the environment, but they have an actual impact on human health and our quality of life. Yeah, you mentioned being green before it was cool. <laughs> um, I remember back years ago being adamant about recycling yeah. and reusing products yeah. for, a, for a new and, and better use. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people were like, oh, you're crazy, you know, mm -hmm. why do you waste your time, this right. and that. But you know, uh, the situation we're in in uh, recent times is kind of showing that 
if we haven't uh, been that way in the past, we're kind of being forced to be that way now. And uh, there's not a lot of negative talk about what we're mm -hmm. trying to do here. Yeah. Uh, people can see the light, if right. you will, that uh, it, it's the way that we need to go. Right. I think that people understand now that it's not just about saving some, you know, birds or trees. It's mm -hmm. really about our quality of life. And, and for some folks, some of the work that I do, whether it's workshops or when I speak at events, um, I even tell the audience <coughs> it doesn't matter if you're here because you care about the environment or if you're here because you care about future generations or if you're right. here because you care about your own pocketbook, it doesn't matter. Um, because a lot of the things that we talk about when it comes to especially energy efficiency mm -hmm. is about really making sure that you know people can have more money in their pocket and um, right. it's efficient. These are win-win-wins. Um, they help us attain a lot of goals, whether it's for our economy, um, you know, when we talk about retrofitting a house with, you know, for energy efficiency um, or insulating it, those are, that's not something you send to another country to, right. to, to have that work be done there. That work is done here. So th it's really this, this economy, I think, has really made people rethink what are great ways to stimulate that economy at the local level and have some other benefits. So, sure. you know, we've kind of got these two benefits going on. Right. And, and, and what you're talking about uh, basically is t coined as the green economy. Mm -hmm. And I agree with you. Everybody wins. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what I tell uh, people that, that might be watching or people that I talk to throughout my work is uh, that, like you said, generally anything you do towards energy efficiency or renewable energy in the long run, at least, mm -hmm. saves you money. Right. You may have to spend a little bit, That's right. but in the long term, you're going to come out ahead. So if there's no other reason mm -hmm. other than trying to save some money on it, well, right. great. You know, right. whatever it takes right. to do the right thing, right. That that's great. Well, I think it's hard to find anybody that thinks that wasting is a good idea, whether it's wasting money or energy or resources, materials right. um, that can be used again. And so... I, it's really about not wasting and right. you know that's just that's something that we should be thinking about it's good business sense it's good in your home it's good in your pocketbook um, so I, I think we're seeing that more that um, these are strategies that that help us get there and some of us have been talking <laughs> about that for a while the renewable right. energy standard being a good way to get good jobs in Minnesota to have a homegrown economy we don't have coal we don't have nuclear you know rate you know uranium we don't have natural gas here but we have wind and we have right. solar you know some people don't believe that we have a potential because we're in minnesota but we have about the same solar potential as fort lauderdale florida and right. houston texas so it's it's we do and you you know it's cold here in the winter but <laughs> it's also usually sunny usually it is yeah. right and so, that's uh that's a great point mm -hmm. of a lot of people don't realize that yeah. it's too cold up there. That's we can't right. generate right. solar right. Uh, electricity or right. solar thermal. <clears throat> no, it's a it's a great place for that too. It's actually um, solar energy, um, whether it's like you said, solar thermal or um, solar electric or even solar hot air. It's a great urban renewable option. Sure. Wind turbines, you know, don't always work in an urban area because there's so many buildings and ordinances because of the airport, etc. Right. Um, so that's a harder, there's not as good of a wind resource here, but solar is as good here as long as you have access to that solar. There's not something blocking it. Um, right. Just as good here um, as it is anywhere. So. Right, right. Good point. Well, let's uh, have you explain a little bit about the Green Institute mm -hmm. where you work. And then when you get uh, through explaining that, maybe you can talk more specifically about the CERT program sure. that you coordinate. Sure. Well, um, I actually got involved with the Green Institute before, um, many years before I came there. Um, while I was in college um, at the university, okay. I lived in the Phillips neighborhood of Minneapolis, um, which was right on the edge of uh, the area where the Green Institute was um, had its location. Um, the Green Institute actually started in um, the late 80s, early 90s, um, started um, kind of around a, an environmental justice struggle in South Minneapolis. Sure. There was a um, proposal for a garbage transfer station um, on the spot that the Green Institute now is. And this is a community, the Phillips neighborhood, with um, some of the largest um, ethnic populations, most ethnic populations, very large um, poverty rate, very, very, very high rental um, 
occupancy. And this neighborhood had been kind of dumped on, if you will, for years. Sure. There's a, a plant that produced uh, a, a, a pesticide for grasshoppers that had caused arsenic poisoning in the neighborhood. Sure. There's a, a roofer. There's all kinds of different things. The highways cut it off, and there's a lot of lead poisoning. So this neighborhood had been dumped on for a long time. And I, I think that um, the powers that be thought that, the, you know, they could put one more thing there, and and the neighbors said no, enough and they rose enough. up. Yeah, they rose mm -hmm. up and they said, "We're not, we're not going to do this." And not only sure. did they do that, but when they, when it was clear that they were defeating this <laughs> proposal for the garbage transfer station, they came forward with a vision. They had a vision for. Um, green livable wage jobs for their community. Wow. They had a vision of a building that was sustainable and that um, was an eco in incubator um, for organizations and that sure. they w could be housed together and work cooperatively together. I mean, I think the vision also went to, you know, prairies and deer and things that maybe aren't going to work <laughs> in South Minneapolis. Sure. Um, but it was this great vision, um, and and we did right. form officially the Green Suit in 1993. Okay. Um, and the wonderful thing I think about that organization um, is that it, for the first program that they created, was called the Reuse Center um, right. Stores, and we have one in Maplewood, just off of the frontage road in 36 here, um, and one in um, Minneapolis, actually, in the back of our building. Right, and let me interject sure. here. Uh, if uh, you followed a show that we did okay. earlier this. Uh, winter, you would have saw our filming of the Green Institute's Reuse Center, the Maplewood location, mm -hmm. uh, interviewing Brad Krause and talking about all the great uh, supplies they have there, yeah. all of the great uh, ma building materials that have been taken down from buildings that were torn down and looking for a new life and some other remodel or new construction. Well, and I should add that we um, also are selling um, reused food right. grade barrels that have been made into rain barrels at both locations. Mm -hmm. um, and in the Minneapolis yep. store, we've actually recently, in the last six months or so, added an energy efficiency product line that includes low flow shower heads sure. and power strips and um, a kilowatt meters so you can measure the energy in your house sure. or at, on certain appliances. So right. we have a couple of energy efficient measures there mm. too, which That's is great. It's great to have some, some products that match some of the programming that we do. Right. Um, and so the the organization, you know, they realized this garbage transfer station, um, you know, while they stopped it right now, right. there was a problem. And at that time in Minneapolis, I think that they were tearing down about a house a day. Um, it was in the early 90s. Um, there was a lot of problems going on. And um, they saw a big, huge issue with you know, the landfills and, and right. all this construction debris going into landfills. So the first program was the Reuse Center, which went right to the root cause of well, why they came together. I, they took that kind of negative energy of fighting something and turned it into this wonderful, great um, solution right. um, that, that rose up from the neighborhood. Yeah. And um, it was, it was, it's wonderful that they kind of went right to the root cause, and, and that was the first program. Um, and so now we have two successful stores. Um, we just had our biggest um, uh, sales month in the stores in February. Um, we're very excited. We wow. have been working on a lot of um, deconstruction projects. We also have a deconstruction team that goes into homes and takes out kitchens and flooring and, you know, lighting right, and right. whatever is needed before a house is remodeled or, or demolished um, and then brings that to our nonprofit store and sells it in our nonprofit store hopefully at an, an affordable price um, you know for the neighborhoods that they're yeah in. As, well at least quite a bit off of a retail yeah, yeah for sure so yeah I've I go to those often mm -hmm. uh, in fact the last week I bought a lamp uh, from the Minneapolis location. Mm -hmm. Sure, it was probably half price of what it would have been yeah. retail. So, and we've saved hundreds of tons of materials from the landfill in our um, in the time that we've been open since right. I think '95. So, um, it's a it's a great it's a great story. Th it is, and and one of the things is with the um, some of those uh, materials like the oak flooring and so on like that. You know. It's hard to even get that anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, there is some of the stuff that you can't mm -hmm. even get. It's not even produced, yeah. at least in the quality it was yeah. back when. So yeah. makes it's a great program right. for sure. Very and, good. Right. And we've also deconstructed a couple of barns, and people love the barn wood. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yep. So, you know, there's there's something for everybody. And, and we have a website. You know, people can look at the, the website through the Green Institute website sure. um, and see the different things that are in the stores. So um, the, the second thing that I think um, was really significant that the Green Institute did was 
take this idea of this building that they had, you know, they had this idea of this building, this place on that piece of land that they fought so hard over. Right. And, um, took this vision, um, you know, and um, there was actually a, a model of it made out of Legos, um, kind of the vision of the neighborhood, um, and and really uh, went for it. And sure. um, it took a lot of work, um, but the, the Green Institute built one of the first green buildings in the state of Minnesota in 1999, and it was one of the pilots for the LEAD program, Leadership for Energy and Environmental Design, which is a standard by the U.S. Uh, uh, GBC, the U.S. Green Building Council, sure. um, to rate uh, you know, commercial buildings as far as sustainability. And uh, we're very proud of that history. Uh, we are not LEED certified. It's a l it costs a lot of money to go through <laughs> that process, but sure. we were one of the pilots. And we really highlighted in the building um, reuse materials because obviously that was where we came from and so right. I think we really took that to a new level and um, um, you know we were kind of there before our time you know with this green building and right. it was really quite an experience and it's we've gotten internationally nationally and internationally recognized for that that building yeah and um, it's a wonderful place to work I've been on tour there as you know mm -hmm. and uh, it is a remarkable building mm -hmm. uh, from uh, high uh, efficiency heating and cooling, geothermal, mm -hmm. uh, also um, the uh, green roof, yep. and uh, the other part of the roof with, I don't, can't recall how many uh, solar. 168, I think. 168 solar photovoltaic, the electricity producing yeah. panels. 34 kilowatts. Yep. 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 So we're very proud of what we have. You know, we don't use, um, we use paint with low VOCs. Um, we, you know, we right. really, you know, think a lot about what's in the building and it's a, it's a really wonderful place to work. I actually have worked in a place in the past that was a sick building. Um, you know, lots mm -hmm. of problems. The air ducts were, you know, people were sick all the time. Right. And people just don't get, I mean, we just don't notice that many people getting sick in our building. It's just a very healthy place to work. Great environment. The yeah. air quality is another thing yep. that people are paying a lot more attention to yep. now indoor air quality in yeah. particular. That's right. Um, yeah, it's a great building. Lots of uh, natural daylighting. Yep. I mean, right there, they show in schools that uh, do natural mm -hmm. daylighting that uh, kids do function at a much higher level yeah. than kids in a normal school. We hope that we function at a much higher <laughs> level too. <laughs> we hope I hope so. so. <laughs> I'm right in front of a nice big window. I actually can see the bike bridge over Hiawatha from my um, window. It's pretty fantastic. I can um, see the Minneapolis skyline from the nice. from our green roof. You can see the Minneapolis skyline. We do. It's not huge up there, but we do. Um, uh, many of us. Um, we went up there. We were up there this week. It's unusual in March, but we were up there this week. Um, and uh, enjoy the warm enjoy weather. Enjoy the warm weather and the and, scene. Yeah, yeah, and the scenery. the light rail um, train actually goes right by. Right. Um, and right. it's fun because people are always looking and trying to figure out. I think what we are, what we're doing. We wave at them sometimes <laughs> but it's a it's a really it's a great space and we're right That's great. the other really great benefit is that we're right so we're right on the light rail line which offers great opportunities for people to get to our office on the train sure and we're also right on the M M midtown greenway and so that's another great opportunity. Um, we actually, there, um, there's a bike to work event, um, bike sure. to work week that happens um, in the past. It's been in May that this year it's going to be in June and we host a breakfast and um, feed um, bikers that are wow. um, uh, out on that day. Um, folks can look on our website, but um, June 10th will be the day that we'll be feeding breakfast. It's, okay. There's no cost. We like to, and all the whole building comes together and we, um, each of us has a different station, whether it's pancakes or breakfast tacos or what it is, and we serve breakfast. Oh. Well, um, I think I'm going to write that down on <laughs> my calendar. It's a really fun and event. Do that. It's a really fun event. So. Great. Yeah, we really enjoy that's it. That's wonderful. Well, that's uh, it is. It's a remarkable building, and and I'm sure uh, I, I'm sure it's a great place to work. It is. Um, I wanted you to cover a little bit more in particular yeah. about what you do with the clean energy resource teams mm -hmm. or CERT. Mm -hmm. What could you fill our uh, viewers in on that a little bit more? Sure, I'll just explain what it is first. It's not a breath mint. <laughs> 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 um, CERTS is uh, the Clean Energy Resource Teams. It's a statewide program um, that's mostly state funded, and it um, started off in 2003, um, and with with the exception of the metro area, frankly, at that point, um, mostly in greater Minnesota, the state is divided into seven different regions. Right. Um, and the metro, um, I, I think that they were, the thinking was that there was 
there was a need to kind of engage people in greater Minnesota on the opportunities about around renewable energy and energy efficiency. Sure. And um, especially because there was, um, there had been a couple of years of some of the you know utility scale wind turbines um, happening, and I think there was a lot of more a lot more folks interested in on farm um, energy efficiency and renewable energy. Sure. Folks interested in um, hearing about whether it was you know um, you know methane digesters or opportunities for uh, farm scale wind turbines as a kind of a diversification of the crop, if you will, crop right. of the 21st century. I used, I used right. to say, um, and and so they needed some people to kind of help educate and connect and get information out. And so that's what they did. The metro was a little different because there was definitely a lot of groups here talking and thinking about kind of renewable energy and energy efficiency for many years. Right. And um, and so the 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 goal of CERTS is to connect communities with resources to plan and implement local energy projects. And it's an okay. incredible partnership. It's, it's, we're actually not an organization. Um, CERTS is a project or program uh, that's statewide and has kind of three legs to the stool in the partnership. One is the University of Minnesota through their Regional Sustainable Development Partnership. Okay. And um, they um, really help kind of coordinate um, five of the seven um, greater Minnesota regions. Um, the other arm is um, state government. And there's kind of two entities that are mostly involved in that. One is the um, Office of Energy Security through the Minnesota State Energy Office and the Southwest Regional Development Commission, which coordinates the Southwest region of, of, in Minnesota. And then nonprofits like the Minnesota Project and now the Green Institute. Sure. Um, and the Metro CERT <coughs> region was actually um, created in the 2007 um, legislation that funded um, the CERT team statewide um, more broadly than it had been in the past through the um, Legislative Citizen Commission on Minnesota Resources, which is a mouthful, which just <laughs> means lottery money. It was sure, lottery money that lottery funded money. the mm -hmm. CERTs from 03 um, through 07. But then from um, 07 on, the legislature um, funded CERTs um, because it was something that really helped the state um, reach some of those goals that they were working on right. um, to really be an arm for the state government, the Office of Energy Security, to get information to communities and to get information about what was working and not working and wh what was happening at the local level to those state governments and the people making decisions about that. And so we are not a political organization. We are not an advocacy organization. Uh, we are a resource organization. Great. Bringing people together, facilitating conversation, helping think through the pluses and minuses of the kind uh, of a certain kind of project, piloting, test piloting, different ideas and right. technologies, um, and and really connecting and utilizing the three partners um, and drawing on all the resources that we have, whether it's at the university and the studies and things that are happening there, whether it's the state government and the stimulus money and making sure people know about those different opportunities, or nonprofits and our um, ability to bring people together. Um, and, and really, you know, have a conversation about um, what's happening. Um, so it's um, it's a great, great, great partnership. On what level do you work with these groups? Are they mm -hmm. a community level? Mm -hmm. Are mm -hmm. they a city level? Are they a county level? That's maybe a all of the above. Yeah. Um, maybe you can answer that a little sure. bit. Sure. Yeah, uh, it is all of the above. It mm -hmm. really depends. Um, they do. Um, we do a lot of work with. Um, counties, cities. I was actually surprised um, because Metro CERT kind of came about in 07 and again we have like half the state's population and we decided that instead of having like the other regions have one CERT team where kind of it's open to the public to come to their quarterly meetings, I'd, I think I have to rent out the convention center to have that happen yeah, in the Metro. Right. And so <coughs> we, we structured ourselves in a little different way as sort of a network mm -hmm. with um, little um, like mini certs or baby certs, we call them affiliates um, of community groups um, that have come together and want to explore planning and implementing a project, um, a clean energy project of some sort, whether it's energy efficiency or renewable energy. Right. And so when we launched, um, you know, we, I, you know, when I first came on board, we took some time to kind of figure out how we should structure and you know, kind of fit this interesting niche here in the metro. Um, we launched in April of 2008, um, and I expected, you know, kind of the groups that would come forward and want to be affiliates would be the neighborhood organizations and, sure. you know, it's kind of different groups like that. Um, and was really surprised when 
the city of White Bear Lake, um, you know, and their commission, their um, uh, Environment and Energy Commission decided to, to join on and, and, and figure out kind of how to work together. The city of Oakdale, um, and we work very right. closely with them now. Um, the, um, you know, so it's when cities started, you know, kind of coming on board, it was clear that they were looking for ways to f to figure out how to how to how to do this kind of work and wanted resources, wanted connections to things that they didn't have in their own lives, and they didn't have time to sort out and try to figure out, um, right. you know, who to go to and, and how to who to talk to. But that we could really help, you know, depending on what kind of project they wanted to do, that we could really help figure out who the right people to talk to were. Right, so they get the right information. Absolutely, uh, a Absolutely. city might say, okay, well, we want to do something where. We save money on the budget, yep. but we want to do a, a kind of a green or renewable energy mm -hmm. type project. Uh, I'm sure most of them, because there hasn't been a lot of education in the past, mm -hmm. okay, now what do we do? Mm -hmm. And is that where CERT comes in? Yeah, and it's interesting, mm -hmm. you know, and every group comes at it from a different perspective. There's certainly no cookie cutter approach. Right. Um, you know, a city might decide they want to put solar panels on the roof. Um, and so, you know, we might talk about you know, which building doesn't make sense. You know, they have to look at return on investment, obviously, and budget. Right. Um, and if you're going to do a project like that, would you also consider making sure, you know, doing a white roof so that you're maximizing the opportunity when you're making a change? Um, right. Or, you know, when a, a city or a building is going to be doing a new roof anyways, is that the right time to be thinking about these things? So, so there's opportunities. And some groups, they know exactly what they want. We want to do a solar panel project on the community center. You know, they know exactly what they want sure. and they just need help getting to the resources. Sometimes they, you know, they just need the technical resource. Sometimes they, they have technical people, retired people in their community or somebody that's willing to do that, but they not sure how to bring other community members involved and need some organizing help, sure. perhaps. Um, Sometimes a group says, you know, we really want to do a green thing, but we have no idea what it is. And so I actually find myself as a facilitator often to come to a community group and help, you know, brainstorm some ideas and kind of whittle it down right. a little bit and try to figure out what's the right, the right kind of project based on what the resources they have in their community are, what kinds of things that they, you know, have and, and need. So sure. it, it really depends. Um, it's, it's something that yeah. is it's just not cookie cutter. Yeah, it might be uh, you're going to a certain place, maybe the out state, uh, for example. There's so certain parts of the state which you would say, hey, this, this area is really uh, ideal for wind mm -hmm. power generation. Okay. And go that direction, and, and and maybe they don't know that, or if they go to Southwest Minnesota, of course, and they're driving around, they're going to see quite a bit of wind yeah. power generation going on now. Yeah. But in the beginning, mm -hmm. that's something that uh, you and the CERT uh, mm -hmm. uh, group could provide. Yeah. Or maybe your location, like you were saying earlier in the show, uh, in an urban location. Mm -hmm. There really isn't practical to bring in right. wind turbines, right. but solar energy is a right. is a viable right. uh, solution. So yeah, yeah, and, and in some great. in some areas, you know, it might make sense for wind in the metro, maybe on the outskirts, and some places are a little windier than others. But mostly, uh, especially in the city proper, I get some calls from South Minneapolis, and I just say, you know, it's just not that's not just, if you're really really committed to doing wind, then there's opportunities to purchase wind through your utility company. Right. Um, I know Excel has a program called WindSource and um, other utilities um, have programs as well. Um, but if you're really, you know, really um, bent on getting some renewable energy in the city, the solar energy has um, become a much better option. And with the, there's stimulus, um, you know, opportunities, right. rebates, tax incentives. 30% rebate right oh, now. Yeah, there's some Federal great Mm -hmm. Great stuff out there, and actually, Excel Energy's um, got a new program called Solar Rewards um, that is going to be um, open to residents that will help them um, with some of the capital costs of, of solar. So there's great. some great programs out there right now. If you've ever been thinking about solar, now is the time now to think is the about time. it. Yeah, absolutely. It's I'm glad you said that because, in fact, um, uh, we bought a fixer-up house last fall. Mm -hmm. We'll be replacing windows, mm -hmm. old windows. Century College here in mm -hmm. White Bear is going to come out and uh, during the MRES, Minnesota Renewable Energy Society, 30th anniversary where you were speaking, mm -hmm. uh, I won a silent auction to mm -hmm. have a solar uh, assessment done at my house oh, sure. and I think that's going to happen here in the next few weeks and I'm excited. Oh, sure. So uh, yeah. yeah, I'm, I'm kind of on my way. Great. So 
it's exciting to me for sure. Yeah, no, and and I think that's right. And I'm glad you're um, working on the energy efficiency first. I think that's a really important thing. I right. think people get um, really excited about the sexy renewable energy, <laughs> and it is. It's great. It is. Um, yep. <clears throat> but what I think people overlook sometimes is that if you don't do the energy efficiency first, you're going to spend more money on capital costs for solar um, to put more panels on than you might need if you size your load, if you will, right. to the right size um, before you do that big capital investment of the solar panels and making sure, uh, and if you do it that right, then you'll get more, a higher percentage of your electricity from the solar, if you if you make sure you're you're you're, um, you're more energy efficient. Oh, for first. sure, that's definitely so that's a the great bonus, um, you know, <clears> for <throat> that. And right. and you know, it's you really need to you know think first. There's a hierarchy and, and energy efficiencies first, and and people believe that and they know it, and it comes out in all these things that we say. But um, mm. you know, often when we have a uh, a meeting about energy efficiency, there's about a th you know a third <laughs> of the amount of people is there are for en renewable energy. Right. And I think one of the challenges is that energy efficiency. Um, uh, is not visible. So people can't right. see how many people are really taking measures in their own home to reduce their energy use. Uh, people can't tell by looking at my house that it's really energy efficient from the outside. Right, right. I wish there was a, <coughs> a signal or something that we could do, um, but you know, a solar you know, a solar panel is really visible. People can see that and they go, oh yeah, that's right. what we're doing. And they might ask their neighbor, well, you know, how's that work? Does that work pretty well, you know? Um, and so, you know, I, I think we have to spread the word, tell each other about what you're doing in your house to be more energy efficient and, um, and then more people will kind of know that that's something that's important to do. F for sure, yep. That's the first step before you go to renewable energy. That's right. Um, I know you have a uh, little clip here I do. And showing you speaking at the MERS 30th anniversary yep. uh, gala. Yep. And uh, is that uh, time? We, should we put that on now? Yeah, well, and let me um, set it up a little tiny okay. bit here. The um, Minnesota Renewable Energy Society um, was uh, the 30th anniversary, was a great event. Um, the CERTS team um, was a platinum sponsor for the event, and um, we, we used that opportunity to announce um, some new um, energy efficiency campaigns that we are launching. Right. Um, and they're called certified campaigns. And the first one was about um, vending misers, which um, help reduce the energy use from um, cold beverage um, vending machines. Sure. Um, they actually reduce close to half of the energy you use. I think people think that in a building, oh, that vending machine doesn't cost me anything. You know, the company you know <laughs> takes care of it, but the, whoever owns or runs the building pays for the electricity, and right. um, it's about three hundred dollars a year for the electricity. Wow. And this little tiny device that doesn't cost that much money. Um, can help save about um, half of the energy and it pays back within eight to 16 months. And so we're doing a huge bulk buy um, sure. of this product and um, hope that folks will um, join us and, and learn about this great product. That's great, yeah. Uh, refrigeration units draw a lot of energy, as you know. That's right. Refrigerators is uh, probably the best place to start when people mm -hmm. are trying to replace old appliances with new Energy Star appliances. Yeah. So. Um, well, Lenny, uh, if we can go ahead and let that tape uh, roll. We are blessed with an engaged, knowledgeable, and a passionate citizenry working hand in hand with organizations like MRES and CERTS and utilities like Xcel Energy to increase energy efficiency and renewable energy across the state. Tonight, we're really excited and happy to unveil the CERTS Learn, Connect, and Act campaign, which we hope will help further Minnesotans on their clean energy journey. Learn gives people an easy entry to the technologies, projects, and models that we highlight throughout our state. Connect helps people identify clean energy activators in their community and their region and beyond. And ACT gives people very specific tools to implement the very specific on-the-ground projects. CERTS is partnering with Energy Misers LLC and Energy Smart to kick off our first campaign. It's a statewide bulk purchase campaign of vending misers. Between now and May 1st, you and your organization and business or business can sign up to save approximately $130 a year on energy costs for beverage um, med vending machines by participating in a statewide vending miser bulk buy program. It sounds like a simple action, but you need to understand that vending misers are a simple device that only costs about $160 and have a payback of around 16 months. And the fact that many Minnesota utilities offer either a $50 or $75 rebate on this technology means that the savings potential is even greater. 
This is one of those no-brainer things that everyone should already be doing. We encourage you to take part in this campaign and to act. You can go to our website, mnsearch.org, for more. We will also be, over the coming years, featuring other ACT campaigns like the Appliance Trade-In and Save, which will be kicking off on March 1st. We'll highlight projects like Project Green Fleet's effort to retrofit school buses and give cleaner air to all of the kids riding on buses to school every day. We'll also be highlighting the Green Step Cities project. We want to help people around the state take action now. If you have other campaign ideas, we would love to hear about them. Please feel free to reach out to us and let us know what you think. Thank you for your time tonight. And thank you, MRES, for your years of clean energy leadership. Excellent talk you guys gave there at uh, Minnesota Renewable Energy Society. Uh, I wanted to ask, uh, in particular now, mm -hmm. uh, can you describe some of the success stories you've been involved with, uh, either with different community groups or, or cities? Sure, sure. Um, well, we, um, we've worked, we've only been around for a little bit. We, you know, like I said, we launched in um, April of 2008, so it's been a, almost two years. Um, but we have done some um, cool projects in different neighborhoods, including in cities, including some here in, in the area. Uh, we worked in Shoreview with the Shoreview Green Community. Yep, yep. And I'm involved with that group. Too. It's a great mm -hmm. group. Mm -hmm. um, they, you know, have they focus on a couple of different issues. Um, it's a great group to work with, and they brought me in as a speaker. I think in the summer of 08, um, and um, we're really interested in trying to figure out how to work together. And so I came back in November, and we talked about starting off with a workshop and talking about you know how to save energy and just doing some basic education. Sure. And um, this really great <laughs> woman um, named Betty. Um, said she really wanted to see if she could get it hosted at um, Summer House, which was um, is a um, Presbyterian home senior living facility um, right across from the city hall, actually. Sure, sure. And um, she talked to the manager and they said we could come in. And so we decided to come in and um, do a workshop and we advertised it. And as we came in and did the workshop, um, People were really interested in the information, and we decided to kind of throw something out there, um, kind of on the spur of the moment at the workshop, and asked if residents would be interested in um, joining a contest to see if they could um, reduce their energy use. At first, we called this the cool. Beat Betty contest because <laughs> she was such an energy miser, if you will, um, <laughs> that we wanted to see, you know, if people could, you know, beat her energy use. Sure. Um, and we determined for a couple of reasons that that wasn't didn't make sense because some apartments had two people and had different, you know, two outside walls, and there was other reasons why it just might not have worked. Sure. So then we created the contest um, for them to beat their their own energy use from the same month the year before, which is the right way to look at how to, sure. how to mm -hmm. save energy different months of the year, have um, different energy use. And so we created a contest. I said, you know, we'll throw it out there and we'll do the month of February, comparing February of 08, the year before, to February of 09 when we did the contest last year. So it was just over sure. a year ago. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I said, you know, we'll do this contest, we'll sign some people up. How about if I come back in, you know, middle or end of March and we'll share the results and we'll have a potluck. And um, so we did that. Um, and it was really great for a number of reasons. Um, first off, um, we had some successes. Um, we had, I think, 10 or so participants um, you know, which wasn't super high, but was, you know, pretty good for that group. Sure. Um, you know, uh, we had a lot of people that came to the workshop and, um, you know, basically because we were in their community space um, after dinner. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, you know, they signed up and they gave us a release for their data so we could really look at their energy data. And um, uh, we had a one woman, um, reduced her gas usage by 26% wow. from the year before. Excellent. Um, another, another woman um, who reduced her electrical use, 32% from wow. the year before. Yeah. And there was an average savings across the building, whether they participated in, in the project or not, because we looked at all of the whole the whole building's um, energy use. Sure. The whole building's energy use went down an average of 11%. Wow. So, some people, even though they didn't join the contest, they learned a little something. <laughs> <laughs> right. And we gave a couple of light bulbs away. Um, the other kind of success piece of that that we weren't expecting um, was the, the manager there um, came to both events 
and after the first workshop, um, was asking questions about um, compact fluorescent light bulbs. He had right. some in some areas, and you know, tried to use them where he could. And uh, Pr Presbyterian Homes is very committed to trying to, you know, be a little more sustainable and, and use less energy. It helps their bottom line. Remember sure. our earlier Save conversation. Save some money too. That's yep. okay. Doesn't matter why you come. Yep. Right. <laughs> and um, he didn't know that you there were the um, the little ones for he had little candelabra kind of um, lighting um, all through the hallways sure. and uh, you know we said oh there's a whole variety I think that's part of the problem people don't know that there's such a wide variety of the kinds of bulbs the right. colors there there's just they've come Different such wattage. a long way oh yep. yeah they've come mm -hmm. such a long way and so the next day he went onto the XL Energy website and ordered new lights for there and including the big huge chandelier in the lobby that's on 24 hours a day and okay. he said that um, a couple times a week he would have to get up and change some of the bulbs because the incandescent bulbs burned out so quickly because oh, it was wow. on 24 hours a day. And so there was also a time they, and hazard issue. Yeah, they may be getting overheating up, too. Getting up, right, mm -hmm. getting up on a big ladder. And um, he um, he put the energy efficient light bulbs in. It didn't have to change them for, for a long time. I have to actually right. call him and find out how long it's been. But we do have that case study is actually on our website. And that's the other thing I want to make sure Great. people know. The Great. CERT's website, um, which is www Clean Energy Resource Teams org is a great resource um, mm -hmm. for technology, case studies, um, ability to learn things and connect with groups in your area. Um, it's a really great website that has a lot of information. And so, great. you know, if communities are looking for ideas, um, lots of ideas on the on the website as well. Um, so that was a great success story from um, the Shoreview area. Uh, we also did some work with the Lake Elmo Rotary Club and put on uh, some educational forums last year. Okay. It was very very um, nice to work with the Rotary Club on helping put together some forums for their residents, um, their communities to learn about um, uh, rain barrels and, and water, um, to learn about composting, to learn about energy efficiency. It was really um, a, a great time working with them, um, and so we really enjoyed that. Um, we did also work with the City of Oakdale on uh, a residential home energy uh, program. It was a pilot last fall, um, in the fall of 08, actually. Okay. Um, and when we did that work, we um, helped get do workshops and train people to go out and encourage people to be part of this program where they got some materials and a, a home visit to help um, really look at their house and where they could save energy. Um, and that was really, um, really nice to work with the, the city of Oakdale on now, that when project. You say, when you say they got materials, would that be like weather stripping yeah. and caulk and yep. things that just they about did. everybody can do. Yeah, it was. Help. It was really simple yeah. things. We call them low cost measures where, right. you know, outlet gaskets mm -hmm. where you take off your outlet plate and put this little foam gasket under in, behind it to right. save um, energy because that outlet is a hole in your wall and so right. air gets through it. And mm -hmm. when air is leaking, in, you know, out your house, then <laughs> you're, you're sending energy and dollars out the door. Right. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, that was um, a really great program to work with them and we use that pilot as a model for um, some new work that's happening um, actually um, in a number of different cities across the state. But the Green Institute is working um, in the city of St. Paul running a program that's sort of modeled on that um, for the whole city of St. Paul and we're rolling it out neighborhood by neighborhood. Great. Um, but we are doing a home energy program there where we have workshop <coughs> and we do it community by community to really kind of um, focus there um, and get as many community members as we can. They do a workshop, they get a home visit and then they get a personalized energy report that gives them feedback about how they're doing um, so that wow. they know um, kind of where they can um, you know take you know take it up a notch right. um, and, and, and they've learned some things from the workshop about ways they operate their house that can save energy. And so we're, we're doing that program as well, right. um, along with the Neighborhood Energy Connection, um, which is a great group to work with in St. Paul. Great, you know, what a great place to focus in the inner city yeah. because you'll find that's where you have the majority of the older homes. Right. And of course the older homes were less uh, efficient yeah. as far as uh, in, insufficient insulation, mm -hmm. uh, high use uh, appliances, yeah. high energy use. That's right. Uh, a lot of things, so you can make the most impact mm -hmm. generally in the older in the older homes. Yep. So start in the the cities that were mm -hmm. have been there for a long time. Mm -hmm. Start there, and maybe moving out to the suburbs right. where a lot of times there's newer uh, right. homes, and right. and hopefully at least if they were built after 1995, mm -hmm. the energy code part of the right. building code was a much more um, uh, 
how, what should I say? Stringent. Stringent code, yeah, a much more effective code mm -hmm. as far as energy efficiency. Yeah, absolutely. But again, uh, just about any home uh, built even today, you know, mm -hmm. you could you could do better as yeah. far as energy efficiency and energy usage if you're keenly aware of it. Right. Generally speaking, and you know, there are some homes in Minnesota still that yep. don't have any insulation, which is crazy to Zero think about. Zero insulation. But there are some homes that still don't have any insulation. You know, depending on when they were built. Right. They just weren't built with, with insulation. And so um, there's still lots of opportunities out there. And that's some of the biggest bang for your buck. You know, we spend 55% um, right. of our energy dollars on um, heating and cooling. And so making sure that you have um, your the y your house isn't leaky, yet you seal, you know, you do air sealing in the right. attic, um, and that you do insulation both in the attic and the walls is a really, really um, most, mo one of the most important things you can do in your house. Right, and now uh, they're recommending in Minnesota uh, at least to do 19R in the walls mm -hmm. and up to 49 to 50R yep. in, the, in the attic yep, as, right. as a minimum. Yep. And some of these super energy efficient homes do even more. That's right. Um, but you do have to remember as you seal that mm -hmm. envelope, that house real tight, yep. to make sure there is some air uh, exchange. That's right. And there's a lot of neat things uh, with this air exchange where they can kind of have exhaust air mm -hmm. heating up the air, the cold air that might be coming yep. in in the, in the winter. That's right. And also the exhaust cooler air in the summer cooling off the hot air coming in. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, I, I'm really uh, focusing in my work on ways that you can make your home super efficient. Yeah. And there are a lot of ways and they need to be explored even more. Uh, for instance, your refrigerator any, or your air conditioner, they suck heat out of the inside of the home yeah. and generally, at least in an air conditioner, release that heat outside. Right. Well, that tube, the tubes or the piping could be run into the water heater mm. and heat water with mm. that instead mm -hmm. of releasing it outside. That's right. So there's a lot of things that can be done with heat exchanges yep. and uh, innovative ways of solving uh, right. old problems. So right. a lot of energy going on in a home, mm -hmm. we need to figure out how to harness it yeah. and, and, and keep it in right. to the home. That's right. We actually have an air-to-air -air exchanger in our house. You have an air-to-air -air yeah, exchanger. So, so we've mm -hmm. gotten our house, house um, fairly tight because we have that, we can do that because our, you know, because you do have to be careful. Right. It is you important to be careful. You do need fresh air. Absolutely. You need supply air. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Got to be careful no about, question about mold it. issues and other things. Use exhaust fans. Really mm -hmm. important to use bathroom exhaust fans and right. um, exhaust fans in your in your kitchen when you're cooking. It's really important. Right. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and that was something I learned in the last couple of years. I didn't really know that much about it when, until I came to the Green Institute, but it's right. amazing. And the, the one other project that I really wanted to mention and just say a few words about is that sure. we, um, we just worked, the Green Institute worked really closely with the city of White Bear Lake um, on um, the um, Energy Efficiency Conservation Block Grant. It's a, um, a wow. part, uh, it's a uh, bill that was passed by Congress and mm -hmm. um, um, to bring money to local governments to do energy efficiency and conservation. Um, it wasn't technically part of the stimulus, but I think because of the stimulus, they funded it at a higher level. It's a new program. And um, the city of White Bear Lake uh, applied for some money to do some work uh, contracted by the Green Institute to help restaurants um, in the White Bear Lake area wow. become more energy efficient and to work with them on both the operations and um, work with the employees about how they use the restaurant um, and, and how to reduce their energy use and save money. And when you think about it with small businesses, especially in this economy, right. um, it's important for every dollar. Right. And mm -hmm. restaurants have such a small profit margin that every penny that they can save makes a difference. And so we've, right. uh, the Green Institute's really close to Lake Street I'm in, in Minneapolis and we've been dabbling um, in Minneapolis with some restaurants and um, we're very excited to um, be a awarded some money to work with the city of White Bear Lake and some of the restaurants. And of course for me, it's I'm a hometown girl and I love food and so I'm excited to, to work um, with the city of White Bear and yeah. support the efforts to yeah. make the restaurants more energy efficient. So um, hopefully I'll be spending lots of time in restaurants in White Bear Lake in the mm. next couple of years. <laughs> That's exciting, yeah. and uh, you know, uh, a restaurant is a uh, generally a high energy use mm -hmm. uh, type of establishment. That's right. So yeah, a great place to key again, a great yeah. place to find ways yeah. of of uh, using energy efficiency measures and renewable mm -hmm. energy. Yeah. 
if I can refer to our uh, a film we talked about last uh, show, the kilowatt hours. Mm -hmm. um, one restaurant, uh, Taco King, mm -hmm. in in Chicago, uh, gets all their hot water, and they use a lot of it in their cooking and making their salsas. Mm -hmm. They get all the hot water from eight panels of solar thermal. Nice. nice. And uh, he says that the water comes in at 160 degrees, mm. and uh, that's all they need. They have wow. all their, their hot water taken care of, a huge great. savings. Yeah. Um, so that's that's a good example of that. And, and another one that uh, really blew me away was that there was a, I don't recall the name of the business, but it was a huge laundromat. Oh, mm -hmm. And this uh, owner had installed several s hot water or solar thermal panels uh, to provide all the hot water for all of the washing machines. Can you imagine mm -hmm. how many gallons of water, even with high efficiency right. machines, the laundromat must have had a 40 uh, washing machine, mm -hmm. well, maybe 20 to 40, but you know, throughout the year, uh, you can just imagine mm -hmm. his energy savings was right. incredible. Right. So there's the, such a, there's so much potential out there. Right. The CERTS team actually worked with a, uh, a woman um, that runs a laundromat in Ely, Minnesota okay. on the same concept and solar thermal. So um, Great. That's, I believe there's even a case study on our website about it because um, you have to look at where there's opportunity. If you're using right. a lot of hot water, that's a great opportunity for solar thermal. Um, right. and, and, and solar thermal is a kind of a nice combination of energy efficiency and solar energy using those two combined. Right. Um, and so it's a it's a great kind of cross of what CERTS does with energy efficiency and renewable energy. And so we're very excited about looking at opportunities where there's whether it's a multifamily housing unit with a laundry room or right. you know um, uh, hospital or you know group home or what you know nursing home whatever it may be that has kind of a high um, kind of hot water use. That's a great opportunity for solar thermal. Sure is. And and like we were talking earlier, to look at the energy efficiency part first. Yeah. And, and make sure that you replace or purchase those Energy Star, Absolutely. energy efficient washers Absolutely. first. Uh, not only are you gonna need just a fraction of the water you used to use mm -hmm. per, lo per load, but right. also you're gonna cut down uh, drastically on your elect electric draw. Absolutely. Absolutely, So everybody wins as usual. <laughs> that's right. So yeah, that's great. Well, we're uh, winding down here today and is there any uh, thing that you would like to, you know, say or leave our audience with uh, sure. in the last minute uh, here? Sure. Well, you know, I, I think that um, you know we're really excited to be here. The Green Institute is um, uh, on on board to be a resource. We're a nonprofit organization to help communities um, uh, really look at opportunities for being more sustainable, right. whether it's through reused materials for the stores. Um, you know, if they're, you're doing a remodeling project, the deconstruction team, whether you're interested in community energy, whether you're uh, a community and you're, you know, starting to talk to your neighbor about kind of some opportunities and you want to gather a group together and have us come out and talk to you about what to do, whether you're a small business and you're looking for ways to save energy, save money, um, you know, there's a lot yep. of opportunities yep. out there. Um, and, you know, our we're here as a resource and we're a nonprofit, um, so we're happy to help folks. And, you know, we have a number of different programs, you know, on, our, on the website for CERTS. Uh, we have a program that's geared towards cities that we're going to be launching officially in June at the League of Minnesota Cities Conference, hopefully in, um, um, in St. Cloud. And we have a program working with schools, public high schools and colleges to reduce their carbon footprint called Minnesota Schools Cutting Carbon. Great. Um, and you can get to mm -hmm. that through the CERTS website. There's, so there's opportunities no matter where you are. It's, it's kind of all hands on deck, whether it's people, businesses, local governments, um, you know, w churches, whatever it is. Um, there's opportunities to save energy and save money, and, and we're happy to help. And so Great. just Great. get in touch with us. Great. And, uh, you know, you, as far as your pro information you provide to, mm -hmm. a, to an organization or an individual, it's, uh, you're providing that at no cost, right? That's right. So that's free. Yep. So that's a great, great program, the Green Institute and CERT. Uh, well, Diana, I appreciate you coming here and um, Thanks, enjoy Joe. working with it. you Thank in you. the future. Thank you very much. Well, that's going to do it for uh, this edition of The Green Guy. And uh, I'd like to thank our uh, people out in the studio there, Lenny and Tina, <laughs> doing a great job for us. 
And uh, again, next time, uh, before we meet again, uh, remember, reuse, reduce, and recycle. And we'll see you next time.